What happened to Floyd happens every day in this country, in education, in health services, and in every area of American life. It's time for us to stand up in George's name and say, get your knee off our necks. Today, family and friends gathered in Minneapolis for a memorial service for George Floyd. His family shared their memories about who George Floyd was, the uncle, the brother, the cousin they knew. And the Reverend Al Sharpton delivered a eulogy, one of many he has now delivered for unarmed black men killed by police. Everywhere you go and see people, how they cling to him. They wanted to be around him. When you spoke to George, they felt like they were the president because that's how he made you feel. The thing that I will miss about him most is his hugs. Like he was this great big giant. And when he would, when he would wrap his arms around you, you would just feel like, you know, you were, everything could just go away. Any problems you had, any concerns you had would go away. Learning from him how to be a man, everything he instilled us and taught us, he was doing him, but he was teaching us how to be a man because he was in this world already before us. And he gave us a lot of great lessons. More than anything, I just want to say thank you to him um, just for being there, just being a real genuine person, just being loving and caring and somebody I can count on no matter what. George Floyd's story has been the story of black folks because ever since 401 years ago, the reason we could never be who we wanted and dreamed to be in is you kept your knee on our neck. We were smarter than the underfunded schools you put us in, but you had your knee on our neck. We could run corporations and not hustle in the street, but you had your knee on our neck. We had creative skills. We could do whatever anybody else could do. But we couldn't get your knee off our neck. What happened to Floyd happens every day in this country, in education, in health services, and in every area of American life. It's time for us to stand up in George's name and say, get your knee off our necks. The service ended with Reverend Sharpton asking everyone to join him in standing in silence for eight minutes and 46 seconds, the exact amount of time that George Floyd was trying and failing to breathe with a police knee on his neck. That's how long he was laying there. There's no excuse. He had enough time. They had enough time. Now what will we do with the time we have? In the nation's largest city, in New York City today, thousands of people held a memorial for George Floyd in a park in Brooklyn. And there was this one amazing moment that you should see. Um, George Floyd's brother, Terrence, got up to speak to the crowd. And as he came up to the lectern, he took a few moments to compose himself. He's breathing heavily, sort of taking in the size of the crowd seemed a little bit overwhelmed and the crowd was quiet for a long time but then somebody said we got you and somebody else said we love you and then this surged up from the rear of the crowd like this roar this crowd of thousands of people starting to chant to him you are not alone after the memorial and the vigil there they marched into brooklyn from brooklyn across the brooklyn bridge into manhattan <laughs> Ari, if you thought that the rallies or the enthusiasm or the activism was going to be dying down or waning even just a little bit after the last 10 days, you'd be dead wrong. This is what the nation's capital looked like today. The statue of Dr. Martin Luther King towering over protests against the police killing of George Floyd. Look at that shot. It's incredible. Uh, people got on one knee while the names of African-Americans who have died in police custody 
Read over the loudspeaker. Today marks the 10th day of nationwide protests against the killing of George Floyd by police in Minneapolis. Today, the police officers who were there while he died were arraigned in court. And then you mentioned the eulogy by Reverend Al Sharpton. In that eulogy, he called for a national march on Washington in August. He wants to capture this, this activism, this spirit that we're seeing after George Floyd's death. He wants to capture that and lead that to get tangible police reform. And Brian, that's the continue, that mood, that spirit is what you see here at the site where George Floyd was killed. That memorial service earlier, it was a private service for family, friends, and invited guests, but you had hundreds of people outside of that service, and then you had hundreds of people here all day long. The family actually came by and visited the memorial and spoke to people here, thanked them for their support, and that's the feeling that you continue to have. Take a look at this. I know you've seen this scene before. This is the scene where George Floyd was killed. We've seen this growing memorial, growing sort of activism spring up out of this. It's only gotten bigger as the as the week has gone on the speedway over here i'm sure you've seen this before it is now kind of turned almost into its own village there's a stage behind me people are putting their fists up the two moments actually spoke to how uncomfortable it was and for a reason the first one was the attorney for the family ben crump he was reading the names of just about every black person that was killed from civil injustice over the last i don't know five ten years it was so long that people started to look around uh, and wonder what was going on. And then the second one was those eight minutes and 46 seconds where everybody was silent. At first, it felt like something of solidarity, but by the end, it was so uncomfortable because it felt so long. And to think that that is how long that prosecutors say that that knee was on that neck is unbelievable. Two powerful moments from that memorial. A really emotional day, Brian, that really started with that memorial service. And in that memorial service, we heard from the brother of George Floyd. We heard from his nephew, talked about what it was like growing up with him, the nicknames that they called him, and told different stories about growing up and experiencing and living with the memory of George Floyd. He never, he never, he never failed me yet. From the outhouse to the White House, we come a long way. God will. God shall, God will, God always has. He'll make a way for his children. Go on home, George. Get your rest, George. You changed the world, George. We're going to keep marching, George. We're going to keep fighting, George. We done turn the clock, George. We going forward, George. Time out. Time out. Time out. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.